Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Oh, we've got a great one for you today. We're going to show you how to add some text over images here. And you can also open them in a light box if you want to. Really nice little effect. Now we've just showed you how to do this before and we showed you how to do it just adding a paragraph of text. Today, we're going to show you how to actually to add a list over the top and how to break the line where you want to break your lines. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. Let's just go below this lot. I'll add a new row. Little green button to add a row. I'm going to pop two columns in my row. And let's pop an image module in there. This will work for just about anything you want. Roll the C as it's a text over image video. I'm going to use an image. I'm going to choose my image. Let's pop that one in. Okay, down below you can either link this to a URL anywhere on the web there by putting a URL in here. If you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking it off site, open it in a new tab. That way your site stays open. That's always best practice for links. Or you can have it open in a light box. And a light box is, as I demonstrated earlier, when you click on it, it pops out to a bigger version of itself. I'm going to leave mine on that one today. I don't want any background. And design wise, I'm going to leave everything just as it is. Okay, well, we now want to add a bit of text over this. Like I mentioned, we've done that before. And to do this, we're going to use a bit of custom CSS. So if we go over to the advanced, down to the custom CSS panel, I want to go over to the module elements tab. And we're going to go down to the after right here. And after and before are what they call pseudo elements, so they can add things before or after your actual real element there. And this is where we're going to put our text. So let's write some CSS and don't be put off by this. It's really easy to do. Any code that I write today, I'll put down below the video as usual. You're welcome to copy and paste. But I would recommend getting in the habit of writing CSS. It's a wonderful thing to learn. Okay, well, we want to put some content in here. So I'm going to say content. I'm going to put a colon. And let's just put a couple of inverted commas in there. And spell content right. With CSS, if you don't spell things right, things will not work. Okay, so we've got some content there. I've got a little paragraph I want to put on top. So in between the two inverted commas there, I'm going to put what I want on top there. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's all jumbled up down the bottom, all on top of each other. I will fix that in just a moment. I'll put a semicolon after a little bit of text there, so we can add another line of code. And we want to position this. So I'm going to say position colon absolute so i want to put it somewhere and i want it to stay where we put it now it's all jumbled up over here it looks like somebody's had fun with a pencil there but it's actually all of that text is just on top of each other at the moment so now we've given it absolute positioning we want to tell it where we want it i want it top I want it halfway down basically 50 percent as you can see it's got halfway down our image there the semicolon I want it halfway along from the left as well, so it's in the min middle. So I'll say left, colon, 50% also. And as you can see, there it is right there. Now, at the moment, that left corner is right in the middle of the picture. I want the, the whole of the text to be centered in the middle there. So we need to bring it back a little bit, and I can use transform translate for that. So I'm going to say transform, colon, translate, which means move basically right at the end of the translate i'm going to open some round brackets and i want it to be negative 50 percent by negative 50 percent so that's width and height so that should pull it negative 50 percent half of its width this way and half of its height down so it should be dead center so i'm going to say negative 50 percent and negative 50 percent and we'll just put a little comma in between those two as you can see, that's jumped across into the middle there. Fantastic. Well, let's make it so we can see it. So we can set the font size, the color, and the line height. Let's give it a line height first. 
So it's spacing out that into different lines, line height. And I'll use 25 pixels. Obviously adjust to taste. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of spread out there into a paragraph, which is just what we want. Let's make it white color. Hashtag FFF. There we go. You can see it a little bit better there. I'm fairly happy with that font size, but if you wanted to change it, it's font, F-O-N-T, dash size. And you could change font family the same way as if, if you want to use a different font. Let's say 20 pixels. Not going to be a whole lot different, slightly bigger. There we go. Um, I want it to be center aligned for this particular one. So let's say text align, colon center. That's better. And we'll stretch it out. I wanted to occupy perhaps 80% of our image there. So we'll put a semicolon and we'll give it a width. Let's say 80%. That's better. Let's stretch it out. Now, because it's a sort of busy background image there, some of this text is getting lost in it. So we can give our text a bit of a background overlay. Or well, actually, it's an overlay over the image and behind the text. To do that, we can say background. Colon, I'm going to start off with a full black, which is zero, zero, zero. It's actually six zeros. As you can see, that's got a background there. But I kind of want that to cover the whole image. If you just want it to cover the text, that's fine. You can just give it a bit of padding all around. So if we give it a bit of padding all around, if you just want to cover the text, so I'll say padding, both left and right, say 15 pixels. It's just giving it a bit of space in between there so you can read that. But I actually want this background to cover the whole of the image there. So let's up it to maybe 100% or 100 pixel do. That's falling outside of our image here, which is okay, but I don't want to see it. So still in the advanced tab, and you may not see this on the front back end here as we're working, but when I kill the builder, I'm going to hide any overflow. So this background only goes as far as the edge of the image. To do that, like I say, still under advanced. If we go down to visibility, we've got horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm going to switch both of those to hidden. And it's got rid of that. Now you may occasionally see that spillage on the back end here, but on the front, you should just see the picture amount there. Fantastic. What if we go back to our code? If you want to see the text without the image there, we can leave it like this and just have it fade in over the image. But I kind of like to see a bit of the image through the text. So if we go back to our custom CSS, back to the module elements and our after here, right at the end of our O's, or zeros I should say there for our black, we'll add the other three on. So it's still a full black. But if you put a two digit number on the end from zero, zero to 99, you can choose an opacity for it. For instance, if I put 50, 5, 0 there, it's halfway opaque. You can see some of that image behind. And if you up that number to, say, 80, it'll get darker. Higher up the number you make, the darker it's going to get. And obviously, it's going to depend on your picture. I think I'm going to leave mine at that. Great. Well, we now want to make this fade out and only see it when we hover. So let's put a little semicolon there to make it fade out. I'm going to say opacity, O-P-A-C-I-T-Y. Well, that's a sort of see-throughness, if you like. A zero, so it'll be invisible. And we just got the image there. Then when we hover over it, let me just put a semicolon on the end there. We can set the hover state here by rolling over the dark writing after on top here. When you roll over it, you'll see some little icons appear. And common to all Divi modules, if there's an arrow there, we can create a hover state. So we've got our code for our regular state when the mouse is not on it. When you hover over it or put your mouse on it, click on this tab, we can bring that opacity back to 1. So if I click in here, put my cursor in there, I can write opacity, colon, 1, which is fully visible. So on hover, we've got that. And when we're not hovering, we've got the regular image. Great. Now, just for a bit of drama, if we leave it like this, when we hover over it, it's going to be absolutely instantly, it's going to go dark. I like that text to kind of fade in. 
So in the regular state, I'm going to give it a transition duration of maybe half a second. So transition dash duration. It's okay to use the prompt if it pops up. You can use that. Put a colon on the end. I'm going to make mine about half a second, 0.5s. And that'll make it a lot more gradual when we fade over to our hover there. Perfect. Well, that should work absolutely perfectly. Let's try it on the front end. And then I'll show you how to turn this into a list. I'm going to save my page changes. I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. There's our little image right there. When I hover over, it's going to get that dark background. And our text is going to fly in half a second. When I take my mouse off, it's going to do the reverse there. And that's a great little feature. But we had somebody ask if they can turn this into a list. Really easy to do. Let me show you how to do that. We'll go back in there. And we'll go back into our code here, into our module. Back over to the advanced and the custom CSS. Module elements and down to our after is here it was. Okay, well, let's get rid of this text and we'll put in a, a list type. What I'll do is, so you can see, I'll turn that opacity to one and we'll change it just before we save so we can see everything that's going on there. Okay. I'm going to start off and say UFO sighting, perhaps. We just got to be between our two little inverted commas. So I'm going to say UFO. I'm making this in capitals. Now to create a line, or go to a new line, we need to do backslash and capital A. And a space, next thing will be on the next line. So date, 02, 25, 2024, whenever you want to put yours, obviously. Now you may think that's not working. Well, you're absolutely right. We need to add one more line of code down here to make that actually work. Let's say white space, W-H-I-T-E dash space, S-P-A-C-E, colon. I'm going to put it on pre. As you can see, as I've done that, it's broken that into two lines after that backslash A right there. Okay, well, let's add another line. After our 2024, I'm going to do another backslash, capital A, and say the camera type, Canon. EOS 24. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Now let's just add one more. Backslash capital A. And we'll say distance. And let's make it two light years. Great. So we've got a little list there. And I want to left align this. So I'm going to change the text align from center to left. And as you can see, we've got it on the left hand side there. Now this bit's spilling out. Don't worry about that. As I mentioned earlier. You sometimes see that on the back end here. You will not see that on the front. And let's switch our opacity back to how it was. Zero. You can actually, if I undo that a minute, Control Z to undo, you can change the left amount there by changing this value here. If you want it more over the left, obviously that's way too much there. Or if you want it more, put it more that way. I was happy with the 50 there, but if you do want to change where it actually is, you can do it like that. Okay. Well, let's put that opacity how it was, and we should be good to go on this one. Back to zero. Save our changes now. We'll save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. We'll go on then. Now that same image is right there. And we've got our little list. Fantastic. Now, the only trouble I've got with this at the moment, it's doing everything I want it to do. But when I click on it, it's not popping out into the light box because basically we've put this little thing on top of it and it can't get to the image to pop it out. So we can fix that really easy. So we've got something more like this one here. I just enable the visual builder again. We'll go down, we'll add one more line of code, which will take care of that. Back to the advanced, custom CSS, module elements, down to our after. After our white space pre there, I'm going to add pointer, dash events, 
colon, none. And that will allow our little mouse pointer to pass through that pseudo element, this pseudo element right here, and allow us to click up our module into a light box. And the other thing there, when I hover over, it's got that crazy writing there. This is an AI generated image, and that's actually the title of it. Still in the advanced of our image here, if you want to get rid of that, if we go down to attributes just below, there's that crazy title. You can either put in something more pertinent if you want to see something there. Now it'll just say UFO. Or you can take it out completely to have it speak for itself. I'm going to leave mine just like that. And we should be good to go. Let's save the changes here. Again, we'll pay, save the page changes. Exit the visual builder. Roll on down. There's our little list. Now this time you can see we've got the hand icon. So we can click on it. And open it into a light box. Close it out. Roll over it. We got our little list right back again. And that's a really nice little feature to add some interesting images to your website. As you can see, you can do a little paragraph just like that, or you can make a list just as easily. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have enjoyed this today, take a look on the left hand side in a moment. We're going to have a playlist pop up called Simple CSS. We've got all kinds of things like this. Most of it written for you so you can copy and paste. But all kind of nice little CSS tricks you can add to your Divi site to make things more interesting for your visitors. So there you go. How to add text over an image with Divi theme. Well, once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.